so many questions around what this is. What is it? What can it do for me? How can it positively impact my life, my weight, my energy, my digestion, my relationship with my body? So I am super psyched to have you here. We're streaming live on Facebook. And for those of you that are live on um, the platform here, we're going to open up a QA and a at the end. Um, if you're live on Facebook, please drop questions right below as you have them. And I will be sure to address those as we wrap up. So uh, let's dive right in. So if you're looking for a way to naturally balance your moods and your energy, you're tired of this like up and down or this slump of energy in the middle of the day, being super cranky for no reason, um, understanding that some foods you know even though you love them are maybe giving you that crash at the end of the day. If you are ready to solve digestive comfort and pain, lose the bloat, clear your brain fog, the fatigue, or really just to feel refocused. And most importantly, ditch this obsession around food, your weight, and your pant size. You're in the right place. And I promise you guys, it doesn't have to be bland and boring. For those of you that follow my food blog, follow me here on social media or on Instagram, you know that I share beautiful photos of super nutrient dense food that don't suck. Um, so if you are interested in adopting a way that is gonna taste really good, it's not gonna be bland and boring, you're in the right place. So before we even dive in, and I'm sure that some of you guys are going to be able to relate to some of these common worries, fears, and misconceptions, let's just go ahead and clear the air. Do I have to give up all the foods that I love? Is it vegan or vegetarian? Does it consist of eating like a squirrel, eating like tree bark, nuts, and seeds? And the big one that I get all the time, will I get enough protein? And if I'm gonna quickly address all of these now, no, you don't have to give up the foods you love. No, it isn't necessarily vegan or vegetarian. Nope, you don't have to eat like a squirrel, and I guess unless you want to. And yes, you're gonna to totally get enough protein. So let's just dive right into the dictionary definition of a plant-based diet. Like, what does that even mean? So. You guys can read this. A plant-based diet is a diet that is based on food derived from plants. So we're talking about fruits and veggies, whole grains, nuts, seeds, legumes, so things like lentils and beans. Um, and it can include some or no animal products. If there's one thing that I have learned in my years in the wellness industry is that there are as many diets as there are people on the planet. This idea of a cookie cutter approach to nutrition, um, this like in a box solution, it's just not effective. Um, so sure, a 100% plant-based diet is gonna work for some people, but there's gonna have to be a good combination of different foods for most people as well. So um, let's dive right in knowing that. Little bit of a background uh, from me. So here's a picture of me in my 20s. And if I was gonna say something my, to my 30 year old self, it might be something like skinny doesn't mean healthy. I would tell her to eat more plants and more food. I would tell her to drink less wine and drink more water. I would tell her that consistency is key. Nothing is worth having overnight and that work, works for everyone isn't gonna necessarily work for her. And most importantly, to love the skin that she's in. This is something that I'm working on deeply um, over the last six to eight months. Um, and this has been such a transformational journey for me um, from this picture on the left over to the right. Um, and I've, I carry all of these big lessons um, into the work that I do with my clients and apply it to my everyday life. So a little bit of background around me. Uh, this is a picture of me. I grew up in the Pittsburgh area. Um, I graduated high school from here. I went on to study education from West Virginia University. During that time, I also began to earn my 
MAP Pilates certifications. And this is whenever, during this time is whenever I really kind of began to immerse myself in the world of wellness and the wellness community. I went on to come back to the Pittsburgh area, earn my master's degree in education from Carlo University. And then my son Ziggy was born in 2014. And uh, he's four now. You guys, uh, those of you who have uh, who follow know that um, he is the light of my life. He's busy um, and he's beautiful. And I really had a difficult time being away from him. So while I was teaching full time, I was raising my baby in that first year, I started a food blog um, and I also started my health coaching business. In the very beginning, I worked with relatively large groups of women in online support and accountability groups that worked really well um, for the time that I needed it to. And I took all of that knowledge um, and I brought that into my holistic health coaching practice. Um, I began to study holistic health in 2015, 2015, 2016. I earned my certification last year and um, I work with clients now one-on-one -on -one and in small groups. I'm working now currently with Health Coach Institute as well to earn my life coach certification. Um, and I feel completely aligned with my work and the people and the women that I serve. So we're gonna touch on some problems and don't worry, I'm not just gonna give you guys problems today. We're gonna talk about solutions. Um, but the first problem is that we're a little bit confused. It's like all of these mixed messages from media and what's working for some people, what's working for others. It's like, should I be eating raw or a juice cleanse? Should I count points? Should I eat low fat, high fat? Should I be counting calories, counting carbs, low carb, vegan, paleo, vegetarian? Like, oh my God, we're so confused. And again, guys, you know, all of these diets have um, really strong qualities. Um, and the cookie cutter approach from some of them might work for some people, but it's not going to work for most. So what we can do is find the principles from each of these sort of like diet prescriptions, and we can begin to apply those in our own life in a way that serves our unique body. Um, again, there are as many diets as there are people on the planet. The other problem is that we are moving way to fast. I like to say that we live in a microwave society. We uh, want solutions and we want them right now. Um, and this is detrimental to our health. It's causing us to reach for convenience foods. We're skipping meals and we are eating and living under an immense amount of stress. The sort of idea or the expectation that we're supposed to be turned on all the time we're supposed to be available to respond to a text message, to an email, whether it's work or personal related, um, and to just be on and available at all times um, is not serving us. Um, and because we're moving so quickly and we are so much immersed um, in staying connected, we're skipping meals, we're reaching for convenience foods, um, and it's having adverse effects to our health. The next problem is that we're doing less of this and more of this. And this again is because we are moving so fast, right? Um, many of us are dual income um, families. We have children, we're, we have careers, we want to maintain a social life and we're tapped in all the time and who has time to cook anymore, right? Like I don't have time to chop up some carrots or to, you know, roast a piece of salmon or to throw something on the grill. It's easier to just grab some takeout, grab something, excuse me, that is um, shelf stable or I can just grab out of the freezer and heat up. Um, so again, kind of backing away from this idea of like a microwave solution um, and adopting some more slow cooker mentalities like taking time to get back into our kitchen and to begin cooking meals. So this is the uh, sort of a snapshot of what the standard American diet looks like. And this acronym is not an accident, right? Standard American di diet uh, breaks down to SAD when we look at the acronym. So about 63%, um, this is from New York University. I can move this over here so you can find the, the link. 
but about 63% of the standard American diet is comprised of processed foods. So that's everything in that image that I just showed. That's everything on the right. That is things out of boxes, things out of cans, um, convenience meals. So things like, you know, Amy's burritos and frozen pizzas and Ling Cuisines, um, uh, cookies and breads and crackers and things from boxes, granola bars, protein bars, shakes, right? Um, and then about 25% of the standard American diet is animal food. So that of course means things like meat and dairy, um, fish and seafood, and that also includes eggs. Um, for looking at where plant foods are sort of become a part of the standard American diet, it's a really small amount. Look at that little 12% up here in the corner. That is representative of the vegetables, fruits, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, and whole grains that Americans are eating in a day. It's so important to recognize that in this 12%, notice there's sort of two different color hues, about half of that consumption is by way of um, processed fruits and veggies. So think things like the cherry inside your cherry pie or the spinach inside your spinach souffle, um, the fruit filling inside your Pop-Tarts. These are considered by the USDA as uh, fruits and veggies. And we're gonna kind of talk about a little bit more about what uh, that looks like in a reality in just a second here. And what's so important too to notice here, guys, is that fiber is only found in plant foods. We're not going to find real fiber as mother nature intended in animal food or in any processed food. So when we don't have fiber, our digestion is, our digestive system, our metabolic fire is completely diminished. Um, and that's where we're feeling this bloat, right? This is why we just like can't shake weight and, uh, things are not moving the way that we want them to. So this is what the, this is the reality of this, guys. This is an example of a school lunch in the U.S. Um, I worked in schools for many years. I have lots of teacher friends. I'm still connected with a lot of the incredible teachers um, in our community. And um, this is the sad reality of it. And if we think about what the USDA, um, sort of their uh, mandates or what is considered to be a balanced meal by their standards, this is it. Um, and this is the American way, right? This is, um, this is like what a standard kid will eat. And this is what we're teaching our kids to do. So let's take a look and kind of break this down. We have some processed chicken nuggets that are breaded, right, with probably like stripped refined flour. We're dipping it in salty, sugary ketchup, which the USDA, by the way, counts as a uh, vegetable. Um, as part of the school lunch pro United States school lunch program. Mashed potatoes that are probably loaded with butter and salt. Those peas came out of a can, and I'm sure that they have added sugar and salt as well. And then instead of a whole piece of fruit, we have, you know, diced fruit and heavy syrup, sweetened syrup. Um, so this is the reality of that, guys. And this is what it should look like. And this is, uh, you know, the, the way that I sort of teach my clients um, how to build a nutrient dense plate and what we need to be applying in our own life and teaching our children. Uh, this is what I call the magic plate. And if we're focusing on building our plate this way, we're doing a, a lot of really beneficial things. We're not only eating for nutrient density, but we are eating to maximize blood sugar stabilization. We're eating for satiety. Um, and we're eating for energy, which is most important, right? So let's take a look at how this kind of breaks down. Half of our plate, if we're thinking about any meal, half of our plate is loaded up with fresh vegetables and some fruits. So we're loading up half of our plate with um, whole, colorful plant foods. We're eating the rainbow, literally. Um, about a third of our plate is going to include um, a half... A, uh, half to a third of our plate is a serving of protein. So this might be plant-based protein. That might mean beans, um, lentils, and the mame, tofu, seitan. Um, it could also mean pastured meats. So grass-fed beef, um, you know, grass-fed grass roaming chickens or turkey meat, um, pork, pastured eggs, free roaming chicken eggs, um, or wild caught fish. Um, and then we're always incorporating a healthy fat with every meal. 
Now, it's important to note that your healthy fat might have come right alongside the way that you prepared your protein or your fruits and veggies. So if you roast some vegetables in your oven and you toss them in olive oil, then you have your healthy fat by way of those oils. Um, if you're eating a big salad, um, you know, with some grilled uh, pasture chicken on top and lots of veggies and maybe some, uh, I don't know, delicious, just a little big, beautiful green salad with lots of different veggies, and you toss that in an olive oil dressing, then there's your healthy fat. So a lot of times that healthy fat is coming by way um, of the way that we, we prepare those vegetables or the protein. Now you're probably wondering like, well, whoa, like where are the carbs? Here, this, here's the thing, guys, carbs have such a bad rap, but they are so important and they're absolutely always invited onto our plate. I sort of um, use the, the term to say like they're always invited as a plus one to the dinner party. So an un unrefined carbohydrate, something like a sweet potato or a serving of brown rice or quinoa, or maybe it's like that dinner roll at the restaurant, it's always invited onto your plate as a plus one. So we're focusing first on fiber, fat, and protein, which is what you see here on the magic plate with your fresh fruits and veggies, protein, healthy fats. And then if you'd like to incorporate a carbohydrate, unrefined carbohydrate, always invited as a plus one. So let's see how this sort of plays out on a plate. The rest of the world has this figured out, guys. Here's a school lunch in Brazil, Italy. I have to move my thing here. South Korea and France. And just take a moment and bask in how gorgeous these plates are. So these kids are getting super nutrient dense, satisfying meals that are going to fuel their bodies and at school, most importantly, guys, their brains with energy. And just in case you forgot, this is what we're feeding our kids in the U.S. They learn by what we, what, what they see, guys. So we have to be the model, the change we want to see in the world. So the repercussions of this are, are detrimental, guys. We're getting sicker. Nearly 70% of Americans take some sort of prescription drug. I am by no means saying that all prescription drugs are bad. That there are prescription drugs out there that you know create miracles daily, but many of the prescription drugs that we're taking are completely unnecessary um, and can be avoided by way of diet and lifestyle change. Cancer rates in the U.S. have increased by 63% in the last 100 years, and heart disease remains the number one killer of Americans and has increased nearly 65% in 1900. These numbers come from the CDC. So you guys ready for some solutions? Yeah. Number one, we're heading into in each week with a plan. And this is something that I didn't start doing until probably about four years ago. Um, and this is something that I do um, with my clients. Um, it's absolutely changed my life. It changes my client's life. Um, and Ben Franklin said it best. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So how many of you can relate to um, going to the grocery store, like on Sunday or whenever you go, and you buy like tons of food, and you think like, oh my gosh, I'm like, look at all this healthy food I got this week. It's going to be awesome. And then you bring it home and you put it in your fridge and you go about your day. And then the reality of the week hits, you're, you know, a parent and maybe you work full time and, you know, life is crazy, right? Shit gets crazy. And so you're driving home from work or you're coming home from like school pickup and you're like, God, what are we going to make for dinner tonight? And so like that's racing through your brain. Like, what can we make? What can we make? And you get home and get sort of so overwhelmed and frustrated by the fact that like you have all this food, but you just don't even know like where to start. So you just say F it and you order a pizza or you pick up takeout on your way home or you hit the salad bar at Eaton Park. We've been there, right? And then what happens at the end of the week? You're like, oh, need to go grocery shopping again, but I need to uh, like go in the fridge and pull out all these soggy bags of produce and throw them in the garbage because I don't even know what they are anymore. 
right? So you have to head into each week with a plan and I can help you dial this in. Next strategy here, guys, next solution is to focus on building your magic plate during meals. So you're focusing on nutrient density, you're focusing on fresh veggies, you're incorporating some fruits, protein, and healthy fat, and you're always, always, of course, welcome to invite that unrefined carbohydrate to your plate as a plus one. The next strategy would be to choose one plant-based meal to incorporate per day. And if this feels overwhelming, don't let it be. Um, and just take a moment to do some honest reflecting on what you have for typically already for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and about how you could maybe make some very small shifts to make those meals plant-based. I have a growing food blog. I am updating this regularly, and it is loaded with 100% plant-based recipes. Um, some are vegan, some are vegetarian, some include, um, you know, eggs and cheese. Um, some don't. Many are gluten-free, um, and this is a great place to start. Um, Think about how very small changes make a really big impact. So let's say, for example, for breakfast, you normally eat um, like a muffin and um, some breakfast sausage, or you just grab like a breakfast sandwich from like, you know, sheets or somewhere like on your way to work. Um, instead of having that, what if you had some whole grain rolled oats with a tablespoon of peanut butter and some ground flaxseed and some fresh berries and a little drizzle of real maple syrup. Or for lunch, what if instead of having a grilled chicken sandwich or a grilled chicken salad, you had chickpeas on your salad? Or for dinner, what instead of a ground beef or turkey burger, you had a homemade black bean burger? like this one pictured up here. Really small shifts make a really big impact. And if one plant-based meal per day feels overwhelming for you, then start with one per week and start from there. Let this be easy. This one's so important, guys. Tune into how you feel. And this is something that I, I really help my clients to dial in. Really tuning into how your body feels um, around food, how our emotions are tied to our actions, how our feelings um, cause us to act different ways. So how do certain foods impact my energy, my digestion, my mood, my weight, and most importantly, guys, my relationship with myself? When you eat energy draining foods, foods that are, make you feel like you have low energy, back you up, make you feel bloated, turn you into a bitch, make you gain weight, you're not going to feel good about yourself and you're going to have nothing kind to say to yourself. I can help you dial this in. You have the ability to tap into your body's intuition. Your body is speaking to you and communicating to you every day, and you are your own health expert. We can dial this in together. The next one, and most importantly, guys, is to start where you are. We so often take on too much too fast. That idea of like, uh, how many of you have been like laid in a bed, uh, laid in your bed on Sunday night after a long weekend of just indulging or partying or whatever you do, right? I've been here, right? That's how I know how this feels. And you're laying there feeling so shitty about yourself. And you're like, tomorrow, I'm going to start eating really well. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to start drinking more water. I'm not going to have wine when I come home. And you have these like grand plans to like literally change your life overnight. And how long does it last to like maybe Tuesday when you say F it? Like that was, that, this is hard. I'm not doing that anymore. This is about layering it in guys. Got to start where you are. 
So here are some of the faces of the women that I have helped. And look at some of the incredible life-changing things that have happened. Their energy is up. Their skin is cleared. They've lost pounds and inches. They have meal planning resources. They feel light and energetic. They've broken the cycle of emotional eating. Their digestion is improved. They're happier. They're tuned into their bodies. They broke plateaus that they didn't think they were going to be able to break through. They're off their cholesterol medicine. Their GI issues are resolved. Arthritic symptoms are resolved. Trigger finger is resolved. Relationships are improved. They feel more confident in their clothes. What they have learned has changed their life and their mind regarding food forever. You can have this too and more. I'm so eager to hear what you are interested in setting out to achieve. Please share. So how many of you guys feel 100% confident that you can walk away today and begin implementing some of the changes that we talked about today? Like 100% confident, like I can start implementing everything that we talked about today. You might, right? You might be like feeling super motivated and you might be driven for a little while because oftentimes when we get a new, new information, we feel re-inspired and we're like ready to take action for a short period of time. But here's the thing, guys, we, what you don't need is any more information. You literally could open up a, a laptop or pull your phone out of your pocket at any point in, of the day and find all of the information you need about anything. You don't need more information. What you do need is the support, the system, and the accountability to follow through. You need somebody to guide you through all of the negative crap that you tell yourself or that you put into your body, understand why you do that, so that you can change habits for the long term and adopt the slow cooker mentality and ditch the microwave mentality. So if you are totally ready to naturally balance your moods, your energy, to solve digestive discomfort and pain and blow, clear the brain fog, the fatigue, and feel totally refocused, and ditch this obsession around food, your weight, and your pant size, we should totally stay connected. Together, we can identify the high energy foods for your unique body so you can literally begin glowing from the inside out. This isn't gonna happen overnight. This is gonna be a little bit of a process of trial and error, but you and I together can dial this in. And when you do, the energy stores that you've tapped into and the way that your body begins to transform physically, mentally, emotionally is something that's gonna blow your mind. We can together prioritize and honor what is most important to you so that you can break free from this feeling of stress and overwhelm, trying to be everything to everybody. Figure it out what help you to really dial in. Like, what do I want? What do I need? What's important to me so I can better serve the people that I love? We can plow through all that negative shit that you've told yourself for years and begin to adopt some new ways of thinking around yourself, your self-worth, and what is possible for you, your life, your body, your health, your marriage, your relationships. And most importantly, guys, we're going to celebrate and embrace and love your body in this season of your life. Because when we begin from this place, all this other stuff, it becomes easy. So I'd love to open up for questions. A 
I'm going to tune into uh, Facebook Live here. What questions do you guys have? I don't have any questions on this end. I'm checking Facebook. I don't see any questions. So I'd love to open up the opportunity for a discovery session for you to see if you and I working together is a good next step for you. If you're ready to plow through all of this stuff, really dial this in and take yourself to the next level, we should connect. So I'm going to Leave a link below. I am opening up my schedule for the rest of this month. So through the month of May, there's gonna be limited time slots available for these sessions. So I, I encourage you to just soak them up. And um, I look forward to kind of diving into this with you. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, I appreciate you um, and your commitment to showing up this morning for yourself. Um, I look forward to connecting on your discovery call and um, I'll talk with you guys soon. Have a beautiful weekend.